So crowd, crowd mapping. Crowd mapping is making people who don't know do weird things. <laughs> uh, I come from OpenStreetMap. You know this, actually amazing project, yeah, because it's a map of entire world that is made for free by volunteers who spend their time doing, uh, collecting the data for no reward, nothing. And uh, the data is great, you all know that. And uh, people from government, from commercial companies, they look at that and they think, oh, I want this for people, unpaid people to make the data for us. Like, come on, that's like the best thing. And I'm here from OpenStreetMap. Will I tell you how to do that? Well, yes, but the first advice regarding OpenStreetMap is that, no, stop. No, you don't know what you're getting into. Like, yeah. It looks attractive. You might think, yeah, I want that, but you don't know the whole story. You will regret it, believe me. <laughs> like, uh, opposite map took like four years to just take off. You don't have that kind of time. So uh, how do you do crowd mapping? First, try not to. <laughs> yeah, try. Just buying things, it works. It will save you time, it will save you nerves, it will save you money, actually. Just look around, maybe the data you need, you hear, like, because you need the data, probably, I don't know, or because this is fun. Uh, try buying. You can buy a lot of things nowadays. You can buy shops, or data about shops. You can buy, uh, I don't know, land use data, you can get it for free. You're at the conference about free data, so probably there's somebody who knows where to get things you need without crowd mapping, come on. If there's no data, you can pay people to gather it. There are professional surveyors, they're OpenStreetMap members. Very few people pay OpenStreetMap members, uh, and too bad, because they do uh, get the job done. Well, people actually pay opposite map members. There are thousands employed at different companies, but still, you get my point. Find a way to spend money so you don't get into crowd mapping. It works better than you expect. But yeah, sometimes there is no other way. You need data for entire country or entire city. You need some specific data like, I don't know, street lamps. Nobody has data on street lamps. <laughs> so yeah, crowd mapping how to do that. Uh, there haven't been actually a lot of successful projects in crowd mapping. Uh, I will tell you about the good ones. Uh, but there is kind of a uh, common process to crowd mapping. Yeah, but you all need to know like uh, the problems. Like crowd mapping produces really like uneven results, uneven coverage. That's like the main thing about this. This is the result, yes. <laughs> uh, there was a really good uh, research paper ca coming out uh, in March this year about like uh, the impact of crowd mapping about uh, companies ordering that and every single company complained that the coverage was worse than they, than they expected. <laughs> so yeah. So, uh, the process, how do you start? You start with planning. If you don't start anything with planning, you're doing, doing it wrong. So, and that means answering the question, what exactly do you need? What is the project that you're uh, doing? Do you need like, to collect benches, collect street, uh, street lamps, uh, bicycle lanes, uh, illegal parking spots, illegal dumping sites, uh, entrances to buildings, uh, anything. So you think really hard, what exactly do you need? Because the simpler you made the process, the better, the more people participate. Like you might want people to go outside, like in this project where people map noise levels. Uh, they made people go around the city and measure noise. Uh, but how many people will get outside? So it's really hard. Like look at us, we're indoors. Getting people outside, outside is hard. So, but it's 2024. 
we got satellite imagery. We got streetwise imagery, Google Street View, Mapillary, uh, Carter View, um, panoramics, uh, different ways of doing things from home. Like, look at the most important, most popular uh, crowd mapping project, MapSwipe. Some of you have probably used it. Really simple. It shows you um, satellite imagery and asks you to look for buildings, look for roads. If you see one, you tap. If uh, imagery is better, you tap twice. S swipe and the next part of imagery. And you just swipe through a lot of parts of imagery and it's really addictive. You get uh, points for that, you level up. Uh, and it's fun, uh, you can do it from everywhere because it's just imagery. I have done it from bus, I have done it from bathroom, anywhere. Hundreds of thousands of people have used the app, they uh, completed hundreds of projects and it's really popular because it's so simple, just two interactions. But, but you will say, that's not mapping, right? We're here for crowd mapping. It's just tapping on imagery, come on. And that's the secret to proper planning. It doesn't have to be a single campaign. It can be multiple steps. So map swipe is just the first step. People just annotate the imagery. It's first step in humanitarian mapping. There are also next steps. Like that data is fed into humanitarian tasking manager and people uh, behind laptops, they get narrower scope, scope to map because the scope is usually the entire country. You cannot map the entire country, like you know that. Uh, but you can map parts that are interesting. So uh, as a second step, people do the actual mapping, tracing from satellite imagery. And there, of course, there is a third step when that data uh, is shared among the people who actually go into, like, get in the car and get in the place and add the missing, like, uh, attributes, like names, like clinics and stuff like that. Multiple steps, each different, each reasonably simple. You don't have to do it all in one. So planning might, uh, and the first step is the most important step, and it should be as simple as possible, maybe even without leaving home. And now that you know what you need, it's time to develop. And developing, you know, <laughs> development takes money and time. It takes uh, some specific knowledge that uh, some of you don't have, uh, especially when you need to develop an app to go outside. So, yeah. <laughs> so when you use an app, you got it covered. You're at the, sorry, you're at the open conference and we got merging maps, we got Kufield, made specifically for crowd mapping. Uh, there are next disk collector from my company, uh, I want to tell you about this. Uh, Ushahidia for collecting points, which had been synonymous with crowd mapping. So many tools that are already present. There can be drawbacks, they're really complex to set up, to use, and you will have to teach people how to use them and when your crowd mapping is in solvents, it's hard to teach everyone. So you can make it simpler. You can collect the photos. Like you're collecting broken benches to fix city infrastructure. Just go make people go around and collect georeferenced photos with mapillary or just send to the messenger. Like here's the bench I want fixed. It continues. It's really simple, doesn't need to install anything. You get more people contributing. Getting more people is the key. Uh, there was this project in uh, Italy recently uh, about collecting, uh, about crowd mapping illegally parked cars, we, which is kind of uh, funny, but uh, it's really important for city infrastructure. And uh, they, resorted to their own app. Why did they make it? Because it was a really intense and focused project. First, it's, uh, it required a lot of planning because the entire project was meant to be done in just four hours in one evening. So they make, made a bit uh, 
testing version of the app. They tested with 50 people, uh, and it like uh, shows what where you need to go, what to uh, make photos of, all the numbers. Really simple, few clicks, and the actual event took 2,000 people who over four hours mapped, uh, made photos of 60,000 cars all over Milan. Really massive project, come on, 2,000 people in four hours. And for that, like, ready-made solution won't work. That kind of thing can be done only in uh, custom things. So, yeah, uh, development is important. And developing uh, sometimes hard, the same paper I mentioned, uh, here's the name, uh, has like uh, some charts about how to properly develop and test and publish the app, uh, really useful stuff. And you have published the app and nobody comes, why? Because the next step, marketing. People need to know about the app, how do you uh, do that? And of course, that's like, Obvious, you publish articles in the news, you reach out to communities, you just share it as wide as you can. How did that Italian app get to uh, 2,000 uh, participants to go outside? Like, come on, the harder thing. Uh, there were activists, so they basically had an email database and asked everybody to sign up. So activist work, they're called activists for a reason. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, try to reach to interested people. If you're doing crowd mapping in Tartu, go to Tartu Facebook communities that are active, that post things every day. Uh, but marketing, first and foremost, is about answering to why exactly are you collecting? What is the benefit for people? You know what you need, what people need. Uh, and this is a time like, to be truthful to, f with yourself. Like, what is the end result? It's not to get the data. It's never the goal, actually. It's to, I don't know, improve stuff, to make better. The, the, the best version is in missing maps of the answer to the question. Missing maps is a, is a second step in the humanitarian mapping. It, they ga gather the people in the room and they make them map like African cities or Asian or kind of like that, uh, affected by natural disasters. And they basically say, we map to save lives. And you can't beat that. <laughs> like that's the ultimate goal, to help somebody, somebody's life with it. Uh, and you might want to use it, you shouldn't use that, that's like one in a kind of opportunity, uh, but your project is important locally. So you should answer, who am I helping with this? You're not just collecting broken benches. You're helping tired people to spend time uh, outside and improving general health. You're not collecting bicycle lanes. You're uh, Im improving city infrastructure, reducing noise and air pollution, helping children get safely to schools and people to uh, have options to, of getting to work. You don't collect building entrances just. You're doing it to help emergency services because there were cases when there was a fire and uh, the car just didn't know from which side to come to the building and they lost a minute. And that was very bad. So try to answer, who are you helping? Because people who will help you gather the data, they need to internalize your goals. So they need to know that they will be the ones that will benefit from this project. Uh, so people have got to a project, they installed the app, then make, made one edit. What makes them do the second edit? How do you keep people inside? They already know why they're doing this, but they're lazy. Everyone is lazy, I am. So, why do they keep doing this, called engagement? And actually, this is a solved problem, like look at games, gamification, look at social networks, like connection. People become activists in part because they want community. So, uh, 
but uh, yeah, apps generally have means. I mentioned uh, score in Maps Wipe. There is uh, a really good uh, OpenStreetMap editor, Street Complete, uh, that asks you questions like what the surface, how high is the building. Every time you answer the question, you get points. You get many points, you level up. Uh, more type of quests are opened. At some point, you become an expert. People love to be called experts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, my, my friend Le Letvin, uh, she manages youth mappers in Zimbabwe, and uh, youth mappers are students. Uh, and she says, like, uh, students uh, want like good titles. Like at the beginning, you're beginning mapper. Nobody wants to be beginner mappers. They want to be intermediate or expert mappers. So when you like give students those achievements, they are really happy and they do more work. <laughs> so yeah, um, Street Complete has that. Achievements, scores, leaderboard. Leaderboards are important because people love to compete. Some people, not me, but I heard that people love to compete. Uh, so. You, and calculating stats for leaderboards is hard, but it's uh, possible, and you should do it because it drives engagement. It give, gets you more edits. There was a, a project uh, 15 years ago in uh, from New York-based startup, uh, Street Cred, about collecting POI, points of interest, shops and stuff like that. And uh, they made several successful projects, including like 60,000 shops in Indonesia and uh, uh, hospitals and stuff like that. And what they did, they had little boards, but also they like awarded money for, uh, to most prolific contributors. It was kind of crypto scheme, I don't know, but <laughs> it worked. People were really engaged, 60,000, but it's gamification when you add games to your app, people start gaming the app. So you're measuring counts, people will start adding wrong fake edits because they want to see the number go up. So this app required two, three confirmations for a single POI. And that like reduces the number of POI you can trust. That's also the problem, gaming the system. So the project is complete. Finally, it's been a week or a day or four hours. Everything's done. What do you do? You want to just get the data and run? <laughs> you shouldn't. You should close the project properly. Uh, you should, I don't know, post articles, coll collect final stats. If you're sharing the awards for mapping, do the awards. Like this was a project a couple of years ago uh, open state map mapping competition, and uh, we collected like 5,000 kilometers of streets with lane information and like thousands of crossings and stuff like that. We took like a lot of effort to measure stats properly and did the final article about the competition. We went the extra mile, we contacted every winner, gave, get, got some story from that. Because people like to be like uh, presented, people like to be uh, show themselves. This also works. Same with students, actually. <laughs> uh, this is a, a project uh, we made uh, in 2011, early days of OpenStreetMap. Everything was empty, and uh, we mapped this in two days. The entire city, 20,000 buildings, all the land uses, all the roads, and. When we finished it, we didn't just show before and after. We made a video, we made several articles, we published a big article to a, a countrywide tech, tech blog. So this was the entire celebration. It was so fun, we did it several times more. Closure is important. And then you're done. <laughs> you can get the data, you can continue your work, you can help, but also you get, got the experience. Like, very few people in the world have got experience of running a successful crowd mapping campaign. And maybe you could work on that. <laughs> so now you're unique. <laughs> uh, and maybe help somebody to do it even more. And yeah, it sounds like really simple, five steps. 
I'm from OpenStreetMap. When I apply these steps to OpenStreetMap, it doesn't work. There was no plan. Developing is really bad. There, in OpenStreetMap, there's no marketing, no engagement, and no end goal. But still, it works. I, I don't know. So those are like guidelines. They're not rules. <laughs> so really, few people know how to do that exactly. But that's an uh, overview, and it helps and some campaigns were successful. So if you want to run one, uh, I can, uh, we can talk and do some brainstorming about how to get the crowd mapping properly. And that's all, thank you. I mean, commitment also of the communities and everything. So, uh, any questions from your side? Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, wait, no, I'm, I'm going. Yeah, I'm yeah, you, you need to. <laughs> <get back. laughs> he doesn't have a microphone. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what is your approach to vandalism with uh, user inputs if you have to have an image or a free text? Yeah, it's, uh, what about vandalism? Uh, it's a problem in OpenStreetMap. This talk is not actually about OpenStreetMap, but I, I mentioned gaming the system, getting fake edits to get a higher score or get a monetary prize or something. Uh, just double check everything, like uh, street cred did, just uh, require not one, but two, three people validating the th same thing. Yet it usually works. It gets you less data, but it gets you higher quality and more it is, I guess, so it evens out. Just more people works. Other question? That was a lot of info, so, yeah. yeah. I, I have one, one question, uh, Ilya. Uh, what are your thoughts also for some organizations which are using uh, crowdsource uh, data such as uh, uh, virtual maps, how do you see that uh, comp complementary uh, what is happening with crowd mapping? Is that something that the communities can also embrace or is more about how they can collaborate together? So like well, what uh, about companies that using crowdsource data? Uh, again, this is not exactly about OpenStreetMap and overture maps is like the entire <laughs> topic I can make a separate uh, talk on. Uh, but generally like uh, seeing your data used, seeing the thing you worked on as a part of crowd mapping company, you went outside and collected broken benches and seeing those benches fixed because of your action is like the greatest reward you can have. So these uh, projects using crowdsourced data, they're doing the job of getting your work to people who can do something with that. And this is really important. It's not important, only important to collect the data. It is important to make the change that you intended to do with the data, to fix benches, to optimize uh, like uh, fire brigade routes, to uh, remove illegally dumped waste and stuff like that. So don't forget about actually doing the thing. Crowd mapping is not a goal in itself. <laughs> Thanks so much, uh, Ilya. Uh, one last question. We have still a few minutes, uh, or okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we need another microphone. Uh, thank you for interesting presentation. There was a very pretty um, guideline how to make a crowd, uh, crowd mapping that works. Uh, and you mentioned that uh, OpenStreetMap uh, doesn't match uh, this for, for this gui guideline. Uh, do you know any project that uh, also also done much but uh, was successful? Frank, do I know other projects that's uh, unusual in terms of those guidelines? Uh, no, because if they don't do marketing, I cannot know about that. <laughs> but also, kinda, because there are like local projects that short track 
on some of the items. Like you don't need marketing if you need like 50 people and all those people are part of your community. But again, if you miss any of those steps, actually then your project won't take off. <laughs> like come on, there are pretty obvious steps. I did them in like five minutes because come on, you, you have to share your project, you have to uh, engage so people don't leave, you have to develop stuff. So I don't know, Alpacet map is unique. I started my talk with that. Don't look at it, don't wish for that thing. Just do your small project really good. Maybe one quick last question before the next talk and then... Okay, okay, all right. So thanks, Ilya. Thank you, everyone. Everything.